Hello and welcome again to another episode of 10 Minute Talkies. So I'm on a roll and it's Sunday and um, I just wanted to talk about something that um, one of my friends asked me about. What is hypersexuality? Um, let me go get the textbook definition of it before I give you my definition of it. So the textbook definition says, it's from Mayo Clinic by the way, compulsive sexual behavior is sometimes called hypersexuality hypersexuality disorder or a sexual addiction. It's an excessive preoccupation with sexual fantasies, urges, or behaviors that is difficult to control, causes you distress, or negatively aff affects your health, job, relationships, or other parts of your life. So a lot of bipolar dis uh, disorder sufferers actually experience hypersexuality at some points in their experience of the disorder. Um, indeed, it's most likely preoccupation with everything about sex. Personally, I can't remember a time when I was that preoccupied about sex, but I will say that there are times when I pursued um, casual sex and sexual relationships without really thinking about um, the consequences much. I will say that in Filipino, it's called kaladkarin. I will not say that I've been, I have I actually told my psychiatrist um, in my latest um, visit with her that I will not admit that I'm hypersexual, but I will admit that I am kaladkarin. It's that whenever I'm with a guy, it always ends up in that, especially if they ask. But they don't really, I don't really set out to do it and in the process of getting to a meetup, I could actually say no. So I would rather not meet a guy if I'm not up for it, rather than meet the guy and then it ends up in that. So while others ha probably have a preoccupation with doing it or whatever, and I'm not, I don't even enjoy green jokes for crying out loud. So it's not what preoccupies me. It's not what fills my mind day in, day out. And it's just not at the forefront of my mind anymore. I'm 37. And it's not, it's just not what I think about, like, all the time. So, but for some other patients, it's this case. I've read about patients who feel pained that they are in this state and it's sad really maybe it's because i'm medicated maybe be or maybe it's because that the medicines are very effective on me i only take name brand medicines i don't take the um the analogs or the equivalents generic 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 medicine equivalents no generic brand equivalents no i don't take them but in recent years, I wouldn't say that I've been hypersexual. I would just say that I have a tendency to go for casual sex if, not that if it presents itself, but whenever it comes down to it. So yeah, it's more or less sad, but I deal. I deal with the fallout. I deal with the consequences after. Um, does it affect my internal life, my relationships? Not in recent months because I'm not preoccupied with it. But in the past, yes, it may have affected a part of my life. The activities may have affected part of my life. So what differentiates it? What differentiates it from normal sexual behavior, from a high sex drive? To be honest, always boils down to that point that Mayo Clinic brought out. Does it cause distress? All disorders always boil down to does it cause distress? Does it cause distress within the patient? Does it cause distress within the patient's relationships? Does it cause distress or disrupt the patient's career? If it is any of those, like it causes distress to the patient, it causes distress in the patient's relationship, relationships, 
does it cause disruptions or disturbances in the patient's daily life, then it is a disorder. So this has been my clarification of hypersexuality. Um, how does one cope with it? Some medicines actually depress hypersexuality. A lot of the depress antidepressants actually um, depress sexual function. Um, my antipsychotic actually caused me to have a harder time, difficult, more difficult time achieving orgasm. So it's been something that might be helpful for, for patients who actually experience this. I'm on Abilify and Depakote ER. So I will be honest in saying that it has been very helpful if it would have been very helpful had I been hypersexual. But for the most part, since I am not hypersexual, I'm just kalagkarin, the biggest thing that has been a help to me was saying no. Seriously, no is powerful. No is powerful. No is powerful. When you say no to something that you don't want in your life, eventually it will go away. The people who want you will go away seriously just say consistent no's so um what else do i how do you cope with hypersexuality i will probably touch on that in a later podcast for now though um i'm just happy and content to be able to point out to expound how my experience of it is and whether or not i would label myself as hypersexual no i'm not i'm just basically kalagkarin would I say that it's part of my dis bipolar disorder? Maybe. Maybe the impulsivity, maybe the throwing caution to the wind is part of it. But I take responsibility for my choices in going with the people that I went with. It's something that I did. It's something that I made a decision on. What else? So in the last three minutes, I will talk about what's the difference between a compulsion and hmm let me see i would like to define the difference between a an a compulsive behavior or i would like or the difference between compulsive behavior and impulsive behavior so compulsive behavior is something that you are compelled to do and you do it repeatedly and it's sort of a habit but let me get the textbook definition so compulsive behavior is defined as performing an action persistently and repetitively without necessarily leading to an actual reward or pleasure. Another, then we define impulsive behavior. It is when you act quickly with no thought to the consequences. There's nothing on your mind beyond that exact moment. Okay. So impulsive behavior is short term. Whereas compulsive behavior is, like I said, it's a habit. Um, compulsive behaviors may include persistent hand washing. Well, you know, there's no, especially when there's no end to the hand washing. Or yeah, sexuality could be a compulsive behavior if the person no longer experiences pleasure, gets wounded, gets sick in the process. Yeah, STIs abound. So like, and there's no stopping that person. There's no pleasure anymore, but they go for it. There. That's compulsive behavior. Impulsive, they just throw caution to the wind and then do it right now because, just because just because it's right there. So there you have it. Compulsive, persistent. Um, there's no end to it. It's a habit. And it's pretty much persistent. Impulsive is right here, right now. So there. That's your difference between compulsive behavior and impulsive behavior. So just to wrap up, hypersexuality is something that a patient will do, um, not just without thought to the consequences, but because they are compelled to do it. They, their mind is just filled with it, and it's sad, really. And... Personally, I am an advocate for the use of medicines, but as another friend told me, better research whether it's good for you or not. But personally, work with your psychiatrist to find the perfect fit for you. And lastly, um, 
Compulsive versus impulsive, we've already defined it. Compulsive is persistent and it's a habit. Impulsive is right here, right now. So this has been 10 Minute Talkies. I'm over the limit again. And I hope to see you in the next episode or hear or talk to you in the next episode. Thank you and you have a great week ahead. So just as an addendum, the medicines that I'm on are, are Depakote ER and Abilify. The medicine that has curbed my sexual, well, my orgasmic um, function or my ability to achieve orgasm was Abilify. So maybe, just maybe, it will also help people with hypersexuality disorder. Um, check with your psychiatrist and check with literature online if it might help you if you're suffering from hypersexuality and you might want to give it a shot. Always work with your psychiatrist, never self, never self-medicate and always do your research. Always, always do your research and always, always do work together with your psychiatrist. If you trust your psychiatrist, then personally, I just trusted her with her prescription of Abilify. So far, it has worked well for me and I'm not complaining about the side effects. The side effects of my not being able to achieve orgasm, that's minor for me. The sleep disturbances, that's minor for me. But um, I trust her with the therapeutic palette of Abilify and it has work been working well with my cognitive function and it has worked, helped me to focus better. So this is me. This is, um, these are the medicines that I'm taking and I hope that they help you with a tip. Hope that you get well and hope that you are working, inching your way towards wellness. Good luck. And this has been 10 Minute Talkies. I've, I'm well over 10 minutes on this, but hey, I don't mind. I hope you don't mind either. See you on the next episode.